Let's go back to the recent rioting of violent disorder in a number of English and Northern Irish towns and cities. First of all, let's look at the numbers. So since the unrest began almost two weeks ago, there have been more than 740 arrests, with more than 300 people charged in connection with the disorder. 118 people, we now know, are already behind bars. Yesterday, the first jail terms for encouraging unrest on social media were handed down to three men. Tyler Kay, Richard Williams and Jordan Parler. 26-year-old Kay was sentenced to three years and two months in prison for inciting racial hatred online. These counter-protesters also received sentences yesterday. Samir Ali and Adan Gafur said they'd been provoked by anti-Muslim insults in Leeds before punching a group of men. The judge said that was no excuse. More sentences expected to be handed down next week. Let's talk to Francis Fitzgibbon, Casey, former chair of the Criminal Bar Association. Francis Fitzgibbon, thank you very much for your time with us here on BBC Breakfast. Good morning to you. Um, what is your reaction uh, to how these cases have been dealt with, for example, in terms of the speed of prosecution and the speed of sentencing and um, just the appearances in court as well? Well, good, good morning, Nagra, and thank you for having me on the programme. The speed with which the entire criminal justice system has reacted has been extraordinary. You have to remember that there is currently a backlog of, I think, 76,000 cases waiting to get on in the Crown Court, at least. So they've had to push lots of other cases out of the way to make room for the, the emergency that the riots have generated in order to show people that this kind of behaviour will be dealt with very, very swiftly and, and very firmly. It, it's it's a, a tribute to all those concerned in the system, from police to prosecutors to advocates to court staff to judges to probation officers, that they've been able to prioritise the, these cases very much against the odds, I think, because the, the system in general, as your viewers will probably know, it is massively over capacity and has been starved of resources for a very long time. Mm. So how, how have the resources been, been able to be stretched for this? Well, as far as the courts are concerned, they will have had to move other cases out of the way to make room for, for these ones. Um, so when they come back, one doesn't know, but they'll have to join the queue at some stage. But essentially, everyone has just gone that extra mile to make sure that these cases are dealt with at maximum speed. I suppose these are the ones, though, where people have pled, pleaded guilty. So well, that makes it right. quicker. That, that's right. Th those are the ones that really have been fast-tracked. I think people who are fighting their cases will have to wait. Many of them have found themselves remanded in custody. So they're getting their first, possibly their first, or if not their first, a taste of prison as a result of what they've been up to, what they've been charged with doing, I should say, uh, in the course of these disturbances. The, the, the courts are currently listing cases uh, in 2026, even in 2027. So, so there's no telling, really, when some of these people will be on trial, although I imagine that, that they'll want to, again, bump them up the list for the same reasons that they've been dealing with the guilty pleas very quickly. Where do you sit on this? I mean, you, you will know, and you would have, I, no doubt, as many of your colleagues have been, been frustrated by uh, seeing cases delayed for months, years, um, in terms of getting to courts, in getting to courts, I'm thinking, you know, we t we often speak about how long it takes for rape convictions to get through, for rape trials to happen. How uh, how do we balance, or how do you balance in your head, kind of looking at the urgency that has been made clear about setting an example and a, a zero tolerance approach to violence and um, thuggery to actually people who are still waiting for justice to be served. Uh, no one should think that the the usual slow pace of the process is due to idleness by anybody concerned. As I say, the system is working at or over capacity at, at present, and this is this is a, a, a one-off event. Being able to do things this quickly, uh, if they wanted to speed the whole system up, it would require a massive amount of investment in, in people and resources. 
for example, the 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 the, the last government sold off. I think about half of the court buildings in the country. So there's at the, the very start of the process, there's a squeeze on the amount of room that's available for cases to be heard. I think police numbers are now going up again, but a lot of people have left the profession of criminal law for one reason or another, partly because of burnout, because the workload's been so so high, partly because the fees haven't really kept up with the cost of living in lots of parts of the country. So there are all sorts of pressures that remain and that will continue to remain un unless somebody realises that if you want justice to be done quickly uh, and efficiently, you've got to put resource into it. Francis Fitzgibbon Casey, former chair of the Criminal Bar Association, thank you for your insights and your time with us here on BBC Breakfast this morning. Thank you.